Thanks, it will. Well, what'd you want to see me about? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about a, a wonderful product, Thorny. Listerine Antizyme Toothpaste. Well, you're kidding, of course. Well, no. Well, you know where I just been? No, where? The drugstore. You know what I just bought? No. Listerine Antizyme Toothpaste. How about that? Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy school didn't burn down, did it? No, but I'd be glad to spread the rumor if you think it'd help. <laughs> hey, what's all the bellowing about? Well, I'm just announcing the big news. Are you kidding? Don't you think you're overdoing this thing a little bit? I don't even know what the big news is yet. Well, I guess it's about me. Yes, sir, I sure have a talented brother. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. What about you? What about me? Don't you know anybody real close to you that has a talented brother, too? You mean you? Exactly. Yeah, you sure do have a talented brother. Hey, wait a minute. Well, come on, let's hear the big news. Listen to this, Mom. David's gonna be a big newspaper man. What's this? Oh, he's exaggerating. I'm just gonna write an article for the school paper. Oh, well, that's wonderful, Dave. I didn't know you were interested in journalism. Well, I'm not, especially. Well, then how come you're gonna write a column? Well, it's part of our assignment for English. We each have to write an article for the school paper. Oh, well, I think that's a very constructive idea. Yeah, we're taking turns, and this week I have to do something. I could tell you just what to write about, too. What's that? Yes, sir, I'll give you a real hot item, boy. And it'll be exclusive, too. Yeah, I can imagine. Exclusive of any interest. Are you kidding? It's about the most interesting subject I can think of. Okay, what is it? For me. <laughs> you? Sure. Don't you think that'll make a nice fat item? Well, from where I'm standing, it looks a little on the skinny side. <laughs> what are you going to write about, David? Have you decided yet? I don't really know, Mom. Come on, David, why don't you write something about me? If I did, they wouldn't print it. It ought to be a good opportunity. You see, David? No, I mean getting to write the column. It ought to be a lot of fun, and you'll learn a lot, too. I guess you'd like to know a couple of facts about me. What for? Well, theoretical, of course. Now, to begin with, I was born. Is that a fact? Sure. Was it surprising? Well, you're a little on the cuckoo side. I thought maybe you were hatched. <laughs> Watch me a minute, boy. I'll show you how to be a real newspaper man. Like the guys in the movies. Now we got phone, sweetheart. <laughs> Hello, Chief. I got a scooped little bus this town wide open. Okay, sweetheart, if you want to listen to the best little old reporter in this town, I'll take it to the morning bugle. <laughs> Come on, get your feet down off that counter. Please, Mom, I'm making an important call to the city desk. Come on, get them down. Besides, I thought David was the one who was going to write the article. He is. I'm just trying to get him fired up. What's the trouble with this boy? No enthusiasm. What's the matter, Dave? Aren't you interested in writing the article? Oh, sure, but it's going to take time after school, and I need a baseball practice. Well, you're not still worrying about that last game, are you? Well, not only that, but we had a practice game yesterday, and the third team almost beat us. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about it. You fellows will get started pretty soon. Well, I sure hope so. You better start in a hurry. Your league games start next week. You don't have to remind me. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, why don't you get cleaned up for dinner? Okay. How about it, Chief? Okay, sweetheart. Why, David, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> Come on, have a seat, since you're not going to get one on the bus. <laughs> no, I think you're right. <laughs> so how are the boys? I haven't seen them in a couple of days. Oh, they're just fine. At the present, David has a few aspirations in the direction of the newspaper business. Oh, is that so? Well, that never does a kid any harm, selling papers. Oh, no, no, uh, he doesn't figure on selling them. He's writing an article for the school paper. Oh, fine, fine. You better tell him to be careful, though. In what way? Well, you know, they say that printer's ink really gets in the blood. Oh, well, I think that's only if you're tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, I, I think this is just some sort of an English assignment, you know, to give the kids a little writing experience. Oh, sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think so. In fact, they have some awfully good ideas over the high school. Well, I don't know about that, but they sure have a pretty poor baseball team this year. Yeah, that's right. The, the team isn't too good, is it? In fact, I think they had a better team when I went to school. 
Well, I didn't know they had baseball back in those days. <laughs> sure, in fact, we had a real good team when I was there. Did I ever tell you about the hey, time uh, I... Uh, 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 <laughs> well, I don't know what's the matter with the boys this year. I know David's not very happy about it. The same with Will. Gee, it's a shame to have the boys on a team that's not winning. Yeah, it's nice to be a good loser, but it's much more fun to win. I saw the team play last Friday, and believe me, Oz, that coaching strategy was bad. Something was wrong, wasn't it? That's for sure. Just poor judgment. And I'm not saying that just because my boy Will didn't get in the game. Oh, no, no, no. In fact, I'm forced to agree with you. To begin with, they should have taken McDougal out in the first inning. It was obvious he had nothing on the ball. Uh, one play I couldn't see. Why did they let Roper steal home with only one out? Oh. I don't know. And Artie Peterson wasn't even in uniform, and he's the best pitcher we've got. Hey, right there. Gee, uh, I don't know why the team can't win ball games. They got good material. Matter of fact, it's better material than they had last year. Right. Good batters, good fielders. Well, Oz, I just hate to be one of those second guessers. No, 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 no go ahead. But if you ask me... Oh, and I do ask you, go ahead. And I'm going to tell you, Oz, if you ask me, the whole trouble is with the coaching. You think it's the coaching? Well, it's the only logical explanation. Certainly not the material. We both agreed on that. No, that's for sure. The material's fine. The only thing left is a coach. Believe me, Oz, this Shipley fellow's got me worried. Yeah, it seems a shame to have the boys suffer through a bad season just because this man doesn't know his business. What are you going to do about it? Everyone knows it's his fault. Here, the trouble is nobody has the courage to speak up. Somebody ought to get down and have a long talk with him. Yeah, that might be an idea. Takes a man with plenty of backbone, not just some ordinary fella. Someone who isn't afraid to call a spade a spade. Someone who will face that coach with the facts and come up with the results. You know who that man is? No. Neither do I, but when you find him, let me know. <laughs> I think I've blessed the gun. Okay, dinner's ready whenever you are. Oh, you said the right words. I'm starved. Where are the boys? Well, last time I saw them, they were up in their room. Oh, I thought they might be out practicing baseball. No, David seemed kind of worried about that column he's going to write. The boy who was editing the paper called and asked if he could have the story by tomorrow. Well, he'll find something interesting to write about in no time. Ricky was helping him. Well, in that case, it may take a little longer. <laughs> hi, Pa. Oh, hi, Dave. Sit down. Dinner's ready. Have you found a subject for your newspaper article yet? No, sir, not yet. I've been trying to help him. That's okay, Rick. I may find one anyway. <laughs> Dave, what sort of subjects have you been thinking about? Well, I've been trying to get stuff that's important to the school. Yeah, that's the idea. He wouldn't listen to me. I wanted him to campaign for lemonade and all the drinking fountains. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good cause. I don't know whether I like this idea of writing a column or not. Well, what do you mean, Dave? I don't know, I just can't get excited about it, that's all. Oh, you will. The main idea is to find some red-hot issue, you know, some controversial subject, something you can't help getting excited about. Heck, you turned me down a long time ago. <laughs> the, the secret of being a successful columnist is to keep about half of your readers mad at you all the time. Well, you can count on me. <laughs> Never mind now, Ricky. Isn't there something the whole school seems to be interested in at the moment, Dave? Well, yeah, I guess there is at that. So you're probably thinking about the same thing I am. I bet I am, too. The baseball team. Everybody wants to know why we aren't winning any games. Exactly what I had in mind. And don't be afraid to put the blame right where it belongs. You can write a column that'll really get them. And you can write it from first-hand information. Uh, hand me the phone, boy. Okay, Scoop. <laughs> oh, never mind, I got it. Hello, Chief? This is Nelson. I got a story that'll bust this town wide open. Now you're talking, boy. Science has discovered a new and better way to stop the major cause of tooth decay. Reader's Digest assures you this protection is available in pure white Listerine antizyme toothpaste. The first continuous action anti-enzyme toothpaste. Here's the cause of most tooth decay. You eat sugars or starches. Bacteria produce enzymes that attack these sugars and can form the acids that start tooth decay. 
No toothpaste can get rid of bacteria for more than a few minutes. But you can stop those enzymes. Science has discovered the anti-enzyme. The exclusive anti-enzyme ingredient in Listerine Antizyme toothpaste brushes onto tooth surfaces and stays there all day long, preventing harmful decay acids from forming on your teeth 12 to 24 hours. This has been proved scientifically for nine out of every 10 people tested. Other types of toothpaste can protect your teeth for only a half hour. Listerine Antizyme toothpaste stops the major cause of tooth decay every minute of every day. Did you finish that article yet? I haven't even started to type it. Will you stop breathing on me and go to bed? Big man! Stop breathing, he says. <laughs> journalist. Journalist. Journal. And it is the opinion of this reporter. <laughs> wondering whether they liked his column at the school paper. Yeah, I think they did. Will Thornberry works at the print shop, and he says it was swell. Oh, that's good. I hope he gets an extra copy for us. Oh, he'll get an extra copy for everybody in the neighborhood. <laughs> you got to remember, this is a big occasion for Dave. I mean, it isn't every day the boy gets selected to do a guest column for the school paper. Yeah, so David told me all night long. You should have seen him sitting at that typewriter, Pop. He had one of your old hats on, too. Oh, probably pushed way back on the back of his head. Oh, yeah. He calls himself Scoot Nelson. Calls me copy boy. <laughs> Sounds like he's taking this pretty seriously. You know, I think I'll do, Harriet. I think I'll go down and get some ice cream for dessert. Sort of a little bonus for the newspaper work. Well, that sounds like a good idea. This one I've heard today. <laughs> I wonder whether the big newspaper man will like vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. I don't know about the big newspaper man, but you can get all three for the hungry coffee boy. <laughs> Pardon me for staring, but aren't you David Nelson's father? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, I thought I recognized you. I'm Ralph Shipley, the baseball coach at the high school. Oh, well, I'm very happy to know you, coach. You do. Naturally, I'm quite interested in the baseball team. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of coming over to the practice field some afternoon, getting in your way for an hour or two. Oh, well, please feel free to stop by any time. I may put you to work, though. David tells me that you used to be quite a ball player. Oh! <laughs> Well, you don't want to believe what David says on that score. He's only repeating what I've told him. You're <laughs> <laughs> just being modest. I've heard about some of those games you pitched. Oh, really? How did I do? Terrific. Oh, fine. I'll have to ask David about that. I'd like to hear about it myself. <laughs> My invitation still goes to stop by any time. Oh, sir, you can probably give me a few valuable pointers. Oh, you're kidding now, of course. <laughs> oh, no, I'd appreciate any suggestions. We really need them, too. I'm afraid we've had a pretty poor season so far. 
Well, after all, you can't win all the games, you know. We can't seem to win any of the games. We've had an awful lot of bad luck, though. Well, a lot happens to the best of teams. However, I'm not blaming everything on bad luck, and I'm not trying to make excuses for myself. But losing our best infielder right at the beginning of the season was a tough break. Oh, uh, what happened? We had his appendix up. And then our most experienced pitcher, Ricardo Jimenez, ran into some scholastic trouble and had to be dropped from the squad. Oh, uh, uh, what was his trouble? He flunked Spanish. <laughs> that was a tough break. Of course, if I weren't also teaching mathematics, I could concentrate more on the baseball team. Oh, do you teach math, too? Yes, I kind of double as baseball coach. Oh, gee, well, that makes a pretty busy schedule for you, doesn't it? Well, I enjoy it. We have a swell group on the team, too. Of course, some of the boys are inclined to be a little lazy about practicing, but they'll snap out of it. You know, I think David is going to turn into one of my best players. Oh, gee, well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, there's no reason why he shouldn't. He's a good competitor. He's got a lot of team spirit, and he really likes athletics. Gets that from his father, I'll bet. Oh, gee, thanks. I, I kind of like to think so. Seems to be a very intelligent boy, too. Oh, he gets that from his mother. <laughs> I understand he even wrote a column for the school paper today. Oh, uh, yes, I, I believe he did uh, mention something about it. Well, that's fine. Uh, then you haven't read it yet? No, I haven't, but I'll bet it's a good one. Say, I hate to rush off, but I did want to stop by Gordon Bellinger's house on my way home. He's the boy who had the appendix operation. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, how's he coming along? Just fine. Of course, it's kind of tough being stuck in bed, so I thought I'd take him a few magazines and some ice cream to kind of cheer him up. Oh, gee, that, that's very thoughtful of you, Coach. Say, if you and Mrs. Nelson have a free night this week, we'd love to have you stop by and spend the evening with us. I'd really like to talk to you some more about the baseball team. Oh, well, gee, thanks for the invitation. Well, I mean it, too. What about tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow? Well, gee, that, that, that's fine. Well, then it's a date. Oh, well, well, maybe I'd better phone you tomorrow morning after you've... I, I mean... Uh, <laughs> well, so, whatever yeah. you think, Mr. Nelson, it was a real pleasure meeting you, sir. Well, thank you, Coach. It's been a pleasure to meet you, too. Oh. Hi. Say, what was all the activity over at your house last night? Activity? Yeah, I could hear somebody plunking a typewriter until around midnight. Oh, oh, that was David writing that piece for the high school paper. I told you about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, what did he finally decide to write about? Well, you know, the baseball situation over at the high school. Well, good for him. Gonna take a blast at the bungling way the team has been coached, huh? Well, I'm not so sure he's writing about the coaching. Well, Oz, that's where the trouble is. We both agreed on that yesterday. Uh, just a minute, Thorny. Let's not be too hasty about this. There may be a lot of other factors involved in team slump. Such as what? Well, uh, for instance, bad luck. Now, I know that may sound like a pretty feeble excuse at first blush. No, not necessarily. I'd say that bad luck is partly responsible for the losing streak. Well, yeah, certainly. For instance, I'd say it's bad luck that I'm not coaching the team. <laughs> Honey, what gives you the right to set yourself up as a baseball critic? After all, Coach Shipley was a well-known college star. In fact, I understand he even got a tryout with the New York Yankees. For goodness sakes, what is your experience and background to be such a critic? Well, Oz, I'd like to tell you about a few of my triumphs in the diamond. But as you know, I'm a very modest fellow. I just don't like to boast about my athletic abilities. No, I'm serious about this, Thorny. I mean, you're hardly a qualified expert, and yet here you are screaming for the coach's scalp just because the boys happened to lose a couple of practice games. Well, I'm as qualified as you are, and you were screaming right along with me yesterday. That was yesterday, but I feel different about it today. Ah, oh, let's watch out. <laughs> well, anyway, David knows more about this than we do, and I'm certainly glad to see he agrees with me. What makes you so sure he agrees with you? This article he wrote for the school paper. Now, just a second, Thorny. That was not entirely David's idea. In fact, I was the one who suggested he write about the baseball situation in the first place. Oz, whose side are you on, anyway? <laughs> I'm not on anybody's side. And stop shouting. Uh, stop shouting. <laughs> well, you'll have to admit that you're responsible for getting the new baseball coach. Who said we were going to get one? Well, there's bound to be a change when they read David's scathing editorial. 
Now, wait a minute, Thorny. You're blaming me for something that I didn't do. Look, Oz, I know that you're a soft-hearted guy, but believe me, you've done the right thing. I haven't done anything. David wrote the column. Sure, but you're the one who gave him the idea. By golly, I think it was a very courageous thing to do. You're not a kind of a man who's afraid to voice his opinion. No, sir, you stand right up and let your son say exactly what you think. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Thorny. You're getting this whole thing confused. Oz, I'm proud of you. Little, will you listen to me a minute? Coach Shipley happens to be a very nice young fellow. I know he is, and I admire your ruthless attitude. If he can't handle the job, we'll get somebody else who can. Well, I don't want him to lose his job. Well, of course you don't, but that can't be helped. You're sorry, but life is like that. Well, that's a pretty terrible thing to do. Well, sure it is. That's why it takes a hard guy like you to do it. So he loses his job. So you're responsible for him losing his job. But it was bound to happen sooner or later. Now, now, just a second, Thorny. Take your hand off of my sleeve, you heel. <laughs> Hi, did David get home from school yet? Nope, not yet. Oh, I, I'm kind of anxious to see his column. Yes, so am I. I. I wonder what he wrote about. I know. He wrote about Coach Shipley. Oh, isn't that nice? I never met Mr. Shipley, but I met her at the women's club. She's an awfully nice person. You know, we ought to have them over here some evening. Well, I, I have a hunch maybe he might come over without an invitation. Oh, have you met him? Uh, yes, I, I met him just a little while ago down at the drugstore. Oh, what sort of a person is he? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, he's very nice. <laughs> yes, he, he even shook my hand, the right hand, the one that held the knife. What are you talking about? Oh, oh I, I'd, I'd rather not say, Harriet. Why should both of us hate me? Is something wrong? Well, oh, uh, uh, Dave? Hi, Pa. Hi, Ma. Hi, hi, Hello, son. Hello, dear. We've been waiting for you. Uh, yeah, uh, how do they like your column at, at school, Dave? Oh, just fine, Pa. Well, do you have an extra copy of the paper with you? Uh, no, I don't have one with me. Well, you don't? I mean, there are about ten extra copies on the kitchen table. Oh! <laughs> Good. Well, uh, let's see one. Uh, copy boy, go get the chief of paper. Yes, master. <laughs> Tell us about it, David. Uh, yes, uh, what was the general reaction to your column? Oh, I think it's going to do some good. Uh, you mean you think there are going to be some changes made? Oh, I hope so. But I didn't take all the credit. I told everybody you gave me the idea. <laughs> Here's the paper. Oh, thank you, boy. You can have the rest of the afternoon off if you want. Oh, that's okay. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, do you want me to read it to you, Pop? Yes, if you would, please. <clears throat> What is wrong with our baseball team by David Nelson? That's what they call a byline. Yes, yes, I, I know that. Big deal. <laughs> You've already done that. Keep quiet, will you? Uh, uh, Dave, uh, please. The winning team is the team that plays as a team. Team spirit and teamwork show their result on the scoreboard. And it is the opinion of this writer that our team does not have these two valuable requirements. So now we ask, whose fault is this? The answer is easy. Well, now, no, wait a minute, David. How can you blame this on Coach Shipley? Coach Shipley? Who said it was his fault? Well, you do. You say so right in that scandal sheet you work for. <laughs> well, no, I don't, Pa. Coach Shipley's doing a wonderful job. I gave him a good write-up. Well, then who do you think is responsible for the losing team? Well, the players. We've all been too lazy about practice. Everybody's trying to be a star instead of working as a team. Oh, uh, so that's what you say the big problem is, huh? Sure, gee, Mr. Shipley's really a fine coach. And everybody knows it, too, except some of the fathers. <laughs> well, I, I think your column is a good, honest piece of work, David. And I'm glad you said some nice things about Coach Shipley, too. Of course, some people say you, you're just trying to butter him up to get a better spot for yourself on the team. Well, maybe so, but I really meant what I said here. I think he's a good coach, smart man, and really a swell guy. Besides that, he's my math teacher. <laughs> you think David ought to get in a newspaper game, Pa? Oh, yes, I do, Rick. Either that or the diplomatic service. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Sometimes you learn the most from words you aren't supposed to hear. Poor Marge. She'll never hold a man until she does something about her breath. 
until she does something about her breath. Does something about her breath. Research shows that there is a direct connection between germs in your mouth and unpleasant breath. Listerine antiseptic, the most widely used antiseptic in the world, kills germs instantly, kills them by the millions. Listerine's germ-killing action works in three places, stops bad breath where it's most apt to start. Your teeth, your mouth, your throat. In actual scientific tests, Listerine antiseptic stopped bad breath four times better than toothpaste, four times better than chlorophyll. So every morning, every night, before every date, gargle with Listerine antiseptic. It kills germs instantly by millions. Make Listerine antiseptic a friend of yours for keeps. <laughs> Hello, Oz. This is Thorny. Oh, hi, Thorny. Say, I read David's column in the school paper. You know, I'm sure glad he was so nice to Coach Shipley. Well, what happened to you? Oh, I met the coach. Gee, I think he's a fine fellow. Well, yeah, I think so. You know, the team's had some awful breaks this year. First string shortstop had his appendix out, and then the star pitcher flunked Spanish. Boy, those are tough breaks. Well, yes, they are. And when you consider the poor guy also teaches math, well... That gives him a pretty full day. Oh, yeah, it sure does. Oz, I don't like to brag, but you know, Coach Shipley thinks the world of my boy Will. Says he ought to be one of his best players next year. Oh? Yeah, and he also invited Captain and me over to his house some night. He wants to discuss the team and get some of my suggestions. Hmm. He sure takes care of his athletes, too. He was just on his way over to Gordon Ballinger's house. He's a kid who just had the operation. Coach Shipley was taking him some magazines and some ice cream. Uh, Thorny, where and when did you meet Coach Shipley? At the drugstore a little while ago. <laughs> Flakes on your comb can be signs of dandruff. Your scalp starts to itch. It's a warning to you. Dandruff is vicious because it can be infectious. Careful, here's what to do. Try Listerine, try Listerine, keep germs down, massage with Listerine. Buy Listerine, try Listerine, keep germs down with antiseptic Listerine. Next week, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky, will be brought to you by Hot Point Quality Appliances. Remember, Hot Point. Hot Point.